Welcome to the Pivotworks steering stem replacement video. In this video, we'll show you how to install a Pivotworks steering stem bearing replacement set. Locate the bike on a stable platform and remove the front wheel and the forks from the triple clamps. When the front forks are removed, you can then release the front number plate retaining strap where it connects to the handlebars. Now loosen the triple clamp retaining nut. This is the nut that attaches the triple clamp to the steering stem. With the nut removed, you can remove the handlebars and the upper triple clamp is one unit and rest it carefully on top of the bike. We use a hammer and a punch to remove the retaining nut from the steering stem, but you can also use a special tool. Several companies, including Honda, make a special spanner for this nut. Once the retaining nut is free, gently lower the steering stem, including the front fender and lower triple clamp, from the bike. Then remove the old bearings and the upper washer. And all that's left behind is the steering stem bearing races. And now for the important part. A hydraulic press is required to remove the steering stem from the lower triples. There is no other way to remove the lower bearing. Okay, we're showing you what the shop does. This is what the trained professional does to remove the steering stem. They apply some heat and using the hydraulic press, they press the steering stem out of the triple clamps and along with it comes the bearing. There's no way you should attempt this at home unless you happen to have a hydraulic press and some training in the use of that device. The good news is that you can take your steering stem and lower triple clamp down to your local shop and they'll remove it for you for a nominal fee. Once you have the steering stem removed, take the parts from the packaging carefully and keep the bearings and races together. The bearings and races are machined as a pair as a match set, so be careful not to mix them up. And if you're doing the work yourself, this is a good time to go ahead and freeze the bearings. And now you can proceed to drive out the old bearing races from the steering head. As you can see from the video, we use a long special tool which is essentially a punch to drive the bearing races out of the head. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get these things out, but you want to be careful not to scratch the inside of the steering head assembly. Okay, in our case we had a little difficulty with the lower steering stem bearing race. And since we were having a little difficulty driving it out, we decided to remove the electronic box and apply some heat to the lower head assembly. Okay, again, we have a trained professional now applying some propane heat to the lower steering head assembly, being careful to reroute the cables and, of course, keep the heat away from the gas tank. With the steering head and the lower race heated up, you should be able to drive it out as you see here in the video. And we skipped ahead here a little bit. We're already installing the lower bearing race using our bearing driver to make sure it stays in alignment and making sure, absolutely certain, that we have driven it in all the way. This is critically important. The bearing must be seated all the way in the frame and the same goes for the top bearing race. If the bearing races are not seated properly all the way in the steering head they will loosen as you ride and the nut will continue to come loose possibly while you're riding resulting in injury or possibly worse. So absolutely make certain to drive these bearing races all the way into their stop position. Okay, you can see here from the video we're using a special purpose bearing driver that matches the outer diameter of the bearing race. 
You can, however, use a large socket as long as it matches the outer diameter exactly. The key is that you have to drive it in all the way and that it has to be even. And you can see the bearing race here, driven in all the way. It's important to note that it is below the level of the steering head. Now, once you've got the bearing races in place, it's time to pack the bearing with some good quality Bell Ray lubricants, in this case some grease, and install the tapered bearings into the head along with the sealing washer that goes on the top. And the same thing for the bottom in the reverse order. And the next step is that our professional has frozen the steering stem before reinserting it into the lower triple clamp and before applying the hydraulic pressure from the press. And again we're showing this for reference only unless you happen to be a professional and own a press you won't be doing this part of the operation but this gives you an idea how it works and how it should look when it's reassembled. You can see that the lower tapered bearing is in place and now you're free to reinstall it into the steering head assembly and put the nut back on the top of the steering stem. And now we are tightening down the steering stem retaining nut using a punch and a hammer which is the most common fashion. However if you have a special spanner wrench you can use that. And the trick to this step in the operation is to tighten down the nut to the point where it is securely in place and there's no up and down play in the steering stem yet the steering head or the triple clamps are free to rotate smoothly. Okay, What our mechanic has done here is purposefully over tighten the nut and then backed it off until he got exactly the right feel on the triple. And the final step in the video is to reattach the upper triple with the handlebars torquing the nut down to factory recommended torque specifications. Reattach the forks in the front wheel and you're ready to go. Ride safe.